Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, today's webinar. My name is uh, William Millsley. Uh, this is the uh, last the Swedish National Data Services uh, Nordic webinar series. And today we'll be presenting the landscape of open science and research data management in Sweden. So without further ado, uh, I would like to uh, introduce our speakers. On behalf of the uh, Swedish Research Council, we have two speakers today, uh, uh, Senior Research Officers Sanya Halling and Sumitra Velipilai, um, and they're going to start us off. Uh, that will be followed by Sabina Anderberg, uh, from the, uh, presented on behalf of the uh, Association of Swedish Higher Education. And she is a senior advisor in open science at Stockholm University. Um, this will be followed by uh, Eva Steenfeld, who is uh, our new director of uh, the Swedish National Data Service. And finally, uh, Per Runesson, uh, who is professor in software engineering at Lund Techn Technical University, uh, will be our final speaker. Um, as with the uh, previous webinars, the aim is to present the, the landscape of open science on three different levels. And uh, so uh, we are looking at a broad view uh, of, of the open science and, and research data management lab, uh, uh, policy and uh, via uh, the Research Council and the Association of Swedish Higher uh education institutions followed by uh, a more uh, focused view on on the infrastructure of um of research data management through uh, snd and then a, a very close look at how it is uh, in practice on the ground at, at uh, london technical university um so I think with that, uh, we can hand over to you, uh, Sanya and Sumitra, with the first presentation. So thank you for this introduction and thank you also for inviting us here today. We have prepared some slides here and um, uh, let us show you those. Um, so to begin um, with, um, <clears throat> Uh, what we are going to show here, we are going to talk about policy perspectives, what the open science landscape in Sweden looks like, uh, the current assignments, and more specifically, how we are working at the Swedish Research Council with two assignments connected to open access to research data and the European Open Science Cloud. Um, so in Sweden, at the policy level, there is a national direction for open science in the Swedish government's research policy bill, stating the goal for the transition to open access to scientific publications and uh, research data. But when it comes to research data, the goal for the transition to open access to research data is for it to be fully implemented by 2026, according to the principle as open as possible and as restricted as necessary. There are also assignments from the Swedish government connected to the broader developments towards open science. For open science to uh, for open access to scientific publications, the National Library of Sweden is since 2017 coordinating uh, the work, the national work of introducing open access to scientific publications, and they are also monitoring developments. The Swedish Research Council has the corresponding assignment connected to open access to research data, and we are also appointed as the mandated organization in the Europe in the EOSC Association, the European Open Science Cloud, since uh, 2020, which I will describe a bit more in the next slide. Also since 2021, universities and higher education institutions have an assignment to continue to develop the work with open science in order for the activities to contribute to achieving the national direction for an open science system. Also, the National Library of Sweden has had uh, the assignment to develop national guidelines on open science, which were published in January this year. So, 
Um, uh, you can switch the slide, thank you. Um, so the Swedish Research Council, we are the government agency within the Ministry of Education and Research that fund research and research infrastructures in all scientific disciplines. And we are also advisors to the government on research policy issues and uh, work to increase understanding of the long-term social, benef social benefits of research. When it comes to open access to research data, the Swedish Research Council has an assignment from the government to coordinate, follow up and promote the work of implementing open access to research data. The assignment also includes a mapping analysis and assessment of the national work on open access to research data, which we report on a yearly basis. So the work is done in continuous collaboration with several relevant actors through a reference group. And those actors include research infrastructures, research funders, researchers, and state agencies working with research and innovation. Uh, the Swedish Research Council also has an assignment to coordinate and promote the Swedish engagement in EOSC, the European Open Science Cloud. The ambition with EOSC is to make it possible to share research data across national borders and research disciplines in Europe and to publish, find and reuse tools and services for research, innovation and education in the federal virtual environment. So as mentioned, the Swedish Research Council is a mandated organization in the association providing input that is relevant for the broader engagement within the national research systems to the EOSC association, and also supports the government as an expert state agencies in the EOSC steering board. EOSC is an important initiative also for national coordination for achieving the goal of open access to research data. As research is often done in international collaborations, it is important to anchor and coordinate at the national level current international developments related to interoperability standards and best practices. So there are several guiding and supporting documents published from our assignment as a support in the work towards open access to research data and also as a basis for coordinated work. One of those guiding documents are indicators that can be used to follow up and measure the effects of the work on the transition to open access to research data. They can also be used to identify where extra efforts are needed in this work. The indicators cover different areas, which you can see at the, this picture, um, such as strategy and policy level, uh, working practices, procedures and processes, uh, which, based the, which are the implementation of open access um, in the procedures and knowledge enhancing initiatives. Uh, we also measured the amount of openly accessible data and um, also fair data. And um, th there's also um, uh, one part about incentives. All those indicators can be used as a checklist for measuring how well an organization fulfills the requirements for open access. And each indicator is evalu evalu evaluated on a three degree scale, fulfilled, partly fulfilled or not fulfilled. So uh, it is very important for us uh, that um, those indicators are fully aligned and uh, that the development is fully aligned with the work that is being done on the European level. And my colleague Sumitra will uh, talk a little more about how we are dealing with this. Thank you, Sanya. So, um, yeah, so we're trying to um, synergize the, the national and the international work and um, just to try to show how, how these indicators are linked to overall objectives, especially within the uh, European Open Science Cloud goals. Um, they are... Uh, so within EOSC, there are three general objectives uh, that have been defined. So for open science to become the new normal within uh, quotation marks, <laughs> that standards, services and tools um, are developed and available um, to, to enable this and, and also the sustainable and, and federated infrastructure solutions. 
And so uh, these goals map quite nicely to, to these indicators and to the way we can try to uh, follow how, how the transition towards this uh, is progressing. Um, so this is uh, the overall kind of high level view. Um, now I'll try to describe a little bit and give some examples on how we're actually trying to approach this work and, and uh, fulfill our assignment uh, from the government. So we uh, we have a, a number of different types of activities trying to uh, work on this. We work on providing guidance, um, including recommendations, guidelines, uh, criteria for fair data management. Uh, there's also a handbook on open access to research data and other supporting documents that aim to, to form a common basis for co coordinated open access uh, in policies, routines, and processes. Um, and these are meant to be able to be used by researchers as, as an overall knowledge raising information, but also um, as a joint source of information for, for people working with supporting researchers in planning data, data management um, or in support functions. Um, we also, uh, one of our activities is to stimulate collaboration. Uh, we do, um, similar to what's done today, <laughs> seminars, but also uh, initiate uh, dialogue meetings to capture uh, the needs from stakeholders. We also coordinate the work by uh, reference groups and working groups, um, and this is to capture as many perspectives as possible from, from the different stakeholders here. And then finally, as Sanya mentioned, we now, since a few years back, uh, provide a yearly follow-up uh, on the national status uh, related to these indicators that we've developed. And to follow this, we we use surveys as our main method for it, uh, where we target these key stakeholder groups, uh, meaning universities, research infrastructures, research funders, uh, state ag agencies that also do research and innovation, and also researchers uh, to to see, uh, to be able to follow uh, the progress over time. We also provide an analysis of the status where not only do we use the survey results, we also uh, use information from all of our other uh, activities like seminars and, and dialogue meetings um, to, to map out the current status in, in Sweden. So just to summarize uh, what we've found so far, this is still our early days in the follow-up. Uh, last year was the first year where we used the indicators to be able to uh, see the progress. Uh, but just to give an overview of, of the main results uh, across all of the stakeholders and, and generally what, what we, we've kind of seen so far. Overall, there are some positive sides and some, um, but there's also a, a lot of remaining challenges and, and gaps. So in terms of the strategic and policy level work, we see that it's generally uh, being established and, and slowly increasing. So there's like a steady upward trend, uh, which is positive um, in terms of Implementation, though, uh, this is a little bit more unevenly in place. So this is probably a little bit of a, a shakier upward trend, uh, currently at least. Um, we see in terms of the knowledge building and awareness that there are still a lot of gaps. Um, there are a lot of initiatives as well, but uh, there is still a, a continued need for both support and coordination um, and also a knowledge enhancing initiatives. Um, but also needs uh, to access to technical solutions and, and data platforms. Um, so there's still a lot to be um, improved uh, for, for this work. In terms of making or getting an overview of what the status is in availability of research data and, and data management, this is the, the hardest part so far. It's very difficult to uh, get this information. Um, so this is something where more work is needed, uh, which is unsurprising, um, but something that we will be uh, following uh, and trying to help with uh, in the future. And then finally, in terms of uh, incentives, what we've chosen to do in, in the indicator is to look at whether or not organizations have committed to uh, 
um, initiatives such as the Koara Agreement, uh, which would then indicate that there's at least commitments in place to uh, work on incentive systems. And what we saw last year is that there are uh, quite a number of uh, organizations that have committed to this. So that's a positive thing, but it's currently very difficult to see and assess how the implementation of this is, is actually shaping itself. So this is also something that will take some time and, and something that will uh, follow um, in the future, coming years. So this is our... Uh, whistle stop tour of the <laughs> policy level work done uh, through uh, the Swedish Research Council. So uh, thank you very much for listening. We have a function email address that you're very welcome to uh, contact us uh, at if you have any questions about our work. Thank you, Sanya and Sumitra. Um, I have one question already from the audience. Um, what role would the SRC play in the Swedish national implementation of the EOSC core components uh, as outlined by FAIR core for EOSC? Uh, for example, when it comes to uh, persistent identifier coordination, such as research activity identifiers, um, uh, SW, HIDs, uh, and so on. Thank you. Thanks for this question. Um, so this is still, uh, it's a very good question. It's an, uh, it's not really easy to answer at the moment, but there's a lot of things happening within the EOSC um, community, let's say um, at the moment, um, there is uh, an EU node that is underway and being developed and which will hopefully include a lot of these answers to these questions, if not this year, at least in the coming, um, uh, well, in the coming uh, period. So we can't say with certainty exactly what kind of role we as a, an organization will play, but we're, uh, we will um, inform whenever we can in, in what the next steps will be here. It's a, it's a, there's a lot happening. It will be a very uh, important year this year with EOSC and hopefully um, there will be more answers towards the end of the year. Hopefully this answers the question a little bit. I don't know if Sanya, you would like to add anything to this. I I, I agree with uh, that. And we are looking all the time at the development at the European level in EOSC and the uh, overall development. Um, so, yes. Thank you. Is there any more questions? Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, thank you again, uh, Sanya and Sumitra. Um, and we can move to our next speaker, which is Sabina Anderberg. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, as you said before, I work at the Stockholm University as a senior advisor, but I'm also uh, one of the members of the research data group within the Association of Swedish Higher Education Institutions. I will give you a short presentation of some of the work that has been done within the association related to national open science work. Just some sort some brief facts about the association. Um, it's an organization for institutional cooperation on a voluntary basis. It consists of 38 universities and university colleges. Uh, and the union is uh, financed through membership fees in proportion to each member's total revenue. The association works through recommendations and statements. It initiates and conducts investigations and similar activities. It has no legal uh, status or official duties since the association is not regulated by law, but in practice it is acknowledged as the representative voice of the Swedish universities and university colleges as a sector. And that's important to remember because the association cannot tell the universities what to do, it can only recommend universities to do things. Uh, the host university for the association is Stockholm University. The decisions on principal issues are taken by the General Assembly comprising all member institutions. Normally, the Assembly with all the rectors meet twice a year at the Swedish Rectors Conference. And as you can see, uh, the association is a member of, uh, for instance, uh, EOSC Association and Quara, and also the European University Association, among some. Many of the activities in the association are run by different kinds of permanent or more temporary working groups dealing with the various issues of importance to the sector. The working groups address issues of principal nature as well as more concrete practical handling ones. 
the working methods are conferences, reports, seminars, and direct contacts with, for instance, parliament, government, and other stakeholders, like, for instance, the Research Council. In recent years, several new working groups have been formed related to the fact that higher education institutions need to switch to an open scientific system. The board initiates various working groups with experts from universities and colleges who are given the task of developing proposals, preparing matters or providing advice in various areas that are relevant to the sector. The coordination group for open science was formed in 2017 and the group consists of the chairpersons from the permanent expert groups that are most involved in these issues. And the coordination group ensures that the development of open science issues is coordinated by the association. The group is also consulted on assignments for new groups in the field, requests from other organizations, and also able to suggest changes or clarifications of the assignments of other established working groups. It monitors developments nationally and internationally and makes proposals to the board on strategic priorities. The coordination group has two subgroups, the research data group, uh, as I'm part of, and the investigation group beyond transformative agreements. The latter one, uh, has just recently finished its work and is now dissolved as a group. And I would like to take the opportunity to mention that their report and a new recommendation are available also in English um, and can be found at the um, association's website. The former reference group for EOSC Association has also been dissolved as the Swedish Research Council's reference group for open access to research data and the European Open Science Cloud was formally established. So this shows that it's possible to, to have the flex, flexibility to start new groups, but also to finish groups when they are not needed anymore. A few years ago, a working group for open educational resources was formed as well as a working group with special focus on research assessment. The open educational resources working group came up with a new recommendation just a few weeks ago, and it has been added in the recently revised roadmap. And I will come back to the roadmap uh, later. Here are some examples of activities that have been performed. Uh, the main assignment for the working groups focusing on areas related to open science is to help and support the higher education institutions in their transition to be part of an open science ecosystem. Several recommendations linked to the work with an open science system have been adopted in, during the recent years. Recommendations have been formulated on, for example, data management plan, research data policy, regulations regarding destruction and preservation of research information, open access to scholarly publications beyond transformative agreements, a roadmap for open science consisting of nine recommendations. It used to be eight, but now it's nine. Uh, and also um, an associated guide with time-bound proposals for actions. Representatives from the working groups participate in national and international networks and reference groups for collaboration and knowledge and information sharing. As part of the work to share knowledge and information and facilitate dialogue on these issues, a number of webinars on the theme of open science were held in 2023. The webinars covered topics such as an open access to, to scholarly publications and the transformative agreements, the roadmap to open science and its recommendations a presentation of the annual survey that was sent out to all the members, research assessment and open educational resources. We have also been involved in uh, arranging conference together with other stakeholders. Here you see the nine recommendations from the Roadmap for Open Science. Um, to be able to involve all Swedish higher education institutions and strive to bring together the place in the field and put open science on the university management agenda, we saw the need to create the roadmap in 2021. The primary target group for the roadmap is the university management at all Swedish higher education institutions. Each university and university college, regardless of size, is responsible for ensuring that researchers, regardless of affiliation, are provided with the framework, support, services, and training needed to take part and be part of open science as the new normal. The roadmap aims to clarify the responsibilities of the uh, higher education institutions and the measures needed to accelerate work. And it's important to remember that in 2021, we did not have a national guideline for open science in place as we have now. 
The recommendations address areas such as uh, framework for research and education environments, services and support for the entire research process, the culture of sharing educational resources. This is the new recommendation from this year. Uh, also to strive for fair research data and research results, uh, provide adequate and secure infrastructure and services, and promote uh, cooperation with other stakeholders. Uh, also participate and promote um, activities with international initiatives uh, and promote and develop incentive structures and also to ensure copyright this, uh, when it comes to uh, um, uh, the use, the reuse of research results that is not uh, exclusively transferred to commercial scientific publishers. The roadmap was um, complemented by the guide for implementation of um, the roadmap for open science in 2022. The guide contains specific proposals for actions and capabilities that need to be in place to achieve the Swedish government's target scenario of a transition to an open scientific system in 2026. It also includes an overall schedule for when these capabilities should be in place. The proposals take into account that universities and university colleges vary in size, organization, and resources, and will work partly differently to achieve common goals. There is no one solution that will fit all universities and university colleges. And uh, these will be followed up uh, with an annual survey. In 2018, the research data group started to send out a survey to all the members of the association. The purpose of the questionnaire survey was to compile a quick and simple overview of the progress in their efforts to develop local infrastructure to support mainly research data management. We continued with that survey until 2022. We kept it simple and only added a few extra relevant questions each year. A majority of the members answered the questionnaire every year at springtime. The answers from the sector helped us a lot in our work and also confirmed how certain areas and services were developing or actually not developing. Uh, as the landscape changes and new needs and demands develop, we decided in 2023 that it was time to replace the old survey with a new type of survey with questions based on the proposals in the guide to implement the roadmap for open science. The new survey covers more areas and is also closely linked to responsibility of the university as a whole and not just certain server service providers like the library, the archive, etc. So from 2023 until 2026, at least, uh, all the members will be asked to fill in the survey to what extent they fulfill the work with the transition to an open scientific system based on the roadmap and the guidance recommendations. The annual survey will help to provide an overview of how the work is progressing and what common challenges and opportunities exist among them. We believe that um, an annual survey can help to keep the issues current on the agenda and create discussions and dialogue and also opportunities to learn from each other. The results from the 2023 survey show that there is work in progress in almost all areas. The areas that are not as developed as others are participation in international initiatives and developing and promoting incentive structures. We have just recently sent out this year's survey and we are excited to see that the, re the results in March. And we hope that we will receive answers from all our 38 uh, members and that the answers will show good progress in all areas. We have actually cooperated with the Research Council this year and sent out the service um, at the same time to facilitate, facilitate the work at the universities. And I would just like to mention the, it's called Orienteringskarten in Swedish. Orienteering map sounds a bit strange in English, but that's a translation. Uh, it's an Excel tool at the moment. It has been produced by the research data group within the association and um, Swedish National Data Service. It is based on the Association of Swedish Higher Education Institutions Roadmap and the guide with the proposal. And we think that the tool can be used to plan, concretize and follow up the work to achieve the goals of the recommendations. Uh, and also be able to plan for the annual survey that will come every year now until 2026. 
it's also a good uh, way to get examples of development and um, development work and measures from, uh, from all the different universities and university colleges. Uh, and the latest version is actually uploaded just yesterday, I think, and available on uh, SNDS Synodo. In Swedish only, I think, but it will be translated into English uh, soon, I think. Okay, just some, some uh, final words before I end. I have been part of the research data group since it was formed in 2017. It has been really interesting to see the development since we started our work, but also sometimes frustrating as some things develop and change very slowly and it's easy to get impatient. Uh, and I sometimes think about, I think about a, a big ship, it doesn't turn around very easily. And I always say it's the same for the higher education institutions. Uh, it takes time uh, to change and adjust to new demands and needs. But looking back, it, I do get the impression that we are on our way to fulfill our obligations and we can see that some things have actually happened and we are doing it well to work in developing these services for our researchers. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sabrina. In that case, uh, we will uh, move on to uh, uh, the next level, which is the, the, the infrastructure of research data management and open science in Sweden. Uh, and to uh, present that, we have uh, Eva Stenfeld, uh, Director of SMB. Uh, as William said, I started my position as the Director of SMB uh, only the 1st of February, so uh, slightly more than a week now. Um, I Before I've been working with research infrastructures and open science for quite some time. Uh, I also worked quite a lot with Nordic research cooperation within Nordforsk and the Nordic Council of Ministers and on the EU level with the framework programs and with Sweden's work within the Competitiveness Council configuration for the policy areas research, innovation and space. Uh, I will give a short presentation of the Swedish National Data Service, SD, ending with some reflections on how to work with policy progress and change within uh, open science. A short words about what SD is. Uh, it is a national resource that facilitates access to new and ex ex existing research data within and outside of Sweden. It's actually quite old organization, more than 40 years of experience in, in documenting, dissemin disseminating and curating digital research data. It's a national research infrastructure today with a consortium of nine universities with the main office at the University of Gothenburg. Uh, the first funding period as a national research infrastructure uh, covered 2008 to 2022, and today we have funding until 2026 in the current funding period. SD is also a national node in the Swedish e infrastructure landscape. So, the consortium SD is run by a consortium consisting of nine universities. The funding for SD comes primarily from Swedish Research Council and the consortium universities in the form of in kind funding. Consortium members contribute with expertise in various domains of research data through the so called domain specialists who have extensive experience and knowledge from different research fields and research data management. Uh, consortium members can also contribute with the so-called flagship projects. These are targeted initiatives which are developed development work to promote the national efforts with open access to research data in Sweden. Uh, so the network, the SD network connects the local units for research data management and dissemination that can be found across Swedish academic institutions. Each member of the network has committed to create a research data support function, a data access unit, a group that strives to establish local functions within their organizations to manage, store and make research data accessible. The SD main office and the main specialist provide support and advice in this work. A strength in this collaboration is that the researchers at the universities and other research based public organizations across Sweden encounter a uniform and quality assured system for research data management. So the business, business model then looks like this. The operation, making research data accessible with all the different ways this is done, is catered for in a distributed large scale network model. The SD office with support for the consortium functions as a central hub, taking care of services, coordination and development. 
Consortium members contribute through the domain specialists and the flagships. Each member of the S&D network contributes with the local support function, the data access unit. So what does S&D offer then? Um, S&D is a coordinating organization in the Swedish research data landscape enabling data sharing for all research domains according to the FAIR principles, facilitating collaboration, support and training in close partnership with its network. Development of technical solutions for a Swedish national system for making research data accessible. The technical tools are the foundation for the National Research Data Catalog, which contains standardized descriptions of and access to research data. Data may be accessible by direct download or by request if legal restrictions prohibit direct download. Research data that are documented and accessible in the S&D Research Data Catalog gain national and international exposure and become findable on multiple platforms. Uh, and on the S&D website, you will find more services, tools, checklists, etc. For example, the DMP checklist. This is designed to cover an entire uh, data management process for uh, plan for the, for a research project throughout all phases of the project. You can use it for DMPs ad adopted uh, adapted to various research disciplines, data types, different phases uh, of the research process, and demands from research funders. But it also addresses uh, the legal requirements. Uh, SND is also a member of many. <clears throat> international organizations that strive to promote better access to research data in Europe and globally. S&D was appointed service provi provider in the SESTA ERIC by the Swedish Research Council, for example, uh, and S&D participates in several EU-funded projects that are part of creating uh, the European Open Science or EOSC portal. Uh, one of the major goals uh, during the current funding period is to create a new national collaborative portal for research data in Sweden. The portal is launched under the name researchdata.se. It will function as a key service for all researchers looking for research data, metadata, data management information, and at the same time give access to different national and international resources. It can also become a bridge between different uh, scientific disciplines and support cross-disciplinary research. The basis for the search function in the new portal is at the current uh, research data catalog and corresponding resources from other infrastructures that are part of the collaboration. As the aim for research data is to be a true national resource, not limited to SD's network or organization, the partners are, of course, vital for the development and operation of the portal. The portal research data will also be able to function as a Swedish node uh, to the OSC resources that are under construction. So uh, a few words about how to work uh, on policy movement uh, in the field of open science. If you know your Tolkien, you will recognize the there and back again as the alternative title for The Hobbit, a novel by Tolkien. In the context of the story, uh, it refers to the adventures of Bilbo Baggins, who embarks on a quest with a group of people who become his friends. The journey takes him far from his cozy home through numerous perilous encounters and eventually back to his home, there and back again. But it is really about a trans trans of, it is really about transformative journey, not being the same upon one's return, but forever changed. So I thought I would conclude by briefly reflecting on how one can work with policy movement or progress in the field of open science. Because what struck me when I looked through the previous webinars for Denmark, Norway and Finland over the course of a whole day was that it looks different in the Nordic countries, but that there are also similarities. And that each country has taken slightly different paths to end up where they are now and that they have worked with different toolboxes in order to achieve policy changes in the area of open science. The implementation of open science is often described as a top-down process. For example, there are council conclusions adopted at EU level, which then fall down on authorities and organizations at a national level in the form of assignments and different tasks from the government. My experience is that it is definitely not just a top-down process, but a negotiation all the way with opportunities to influence the outcome through the process, a sort of back and forth moment. It is also my view that agreements made at the EU level can actually be used as springboards or starting points at the national level to take steps forward. 
When decided policies are to be implemented, this can be done in different ways, by rewarding or punishing researchers' behavior in different ways. But in order to really move forward, you have to be able to offer solutions and tools for the change you want to accomplish, a vehicle for the direction you have pointed out. And it often becomes easier if everyone goes in roughly the same direction at about the same pace, aided by working with collaborations, networks, exchange and mutual learning. Then you can achieve real change. And it's important to remember that three steps forward, two steps back is still one step forward. And you usually end up with more experience. And as a bonus, you have also made new friends along the way. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eva. Um, again, if there's any questions, please put them in the chat uh, and I can direct them to Eva. Okay, I have uh, one question. Uh, how did you define the shared uh, metadata standards? This For this question, I have to rely, rely on my uh, uh, co-workers at s and uh, I'm not sure quite how to uh, answer that question. Anyone? joining the webinar who can find a good answer to that from SND? Uh, well, I guess uh, I could start on, on, on answering that. I mean, some of the metadata standards that we use are already in place. So we, we use, for example, controlled vocabularies from uh, different fields, depending on what kind of data uh, is to be uploaded. So uh, different subjects have different um, control vocabularies uh, according to international standards that are already well-defined uh, and mapped um, depending on which field. So for example, uh, in our metadata for, um, for archaeology, for example, which is my background, uh, we use uh, the Getty AAT uh, metadata standard, which is fairly uh, in-depth, uh, as well as the uh, British uh, fish thesaurus, which is defined by a consortium of various uh, archaeologists and uh, heritage actors in the UK. Um, they're not perfect in the sense that, for example, in archaeology, uh, what you might find in the UK is not exactly what you'll find in Sweden, so you're not going to find many Roman forts here. Uh, but as part of that metadata standard, that you would get that in, in the UK. But um, they are mappable to a certain extent um, to uh, shared archaeological features. So that's that's one uh, element of the uh, metadata that we have. In general, it's not that we. Um, define metadata standards per se, but we, we, we map uh, the, the standards to existing standards that are internationally established. I have a second question. In researchdata.se, will you be able to collect data sets uh, or metadata involving Swedish researchers from any uh, data archive, international or otherwise, uh, using uh, raw uh, uh, PIDs? This question, again, I will have to refer to, to someone else in the s and I'm sorry for this. Uh, my seven days in s and <laughs> shows. Uh, Andrea, do you, do you know? Um, so uh, basically for uh, researchdata.sc, uh, there are plans of uh, harvesting uh, metadata and making it easier to reference data published in other uh, repositories and uh, infrastructures. But exactly how the integration uh, with other catalogs and other repositories uh, will work is not really determined yet. However, uh, there will, uh, of course, uh, be various ways of harvesting metadata and um, reusing metadata from other sources. And also, in addition to what um, William said about uh, shared metadata standards, so um, we, we have, of course, the, the disciplinary um, metadata standards that are unique to, to various fields, but there are also, of course, uh, common metadata standards to express 
um, the entirety of a data publication, and they are available in various formats. Um, for example, the DCAT AP, which is um, the recommendation, the national recommendation from DIG here in Sweden. And, and there are also uh, other ways of, of disseminating the contents uh, of, of a data publication. Uh, so, for example, through JSON LD uh, and, and so on. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Andre. Uh, and we have another question. Uh, what is the technology used behind the research data catalog? Uh, is it based on uh, some open source platforms? As far as I know, it's 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 built in house. Uh, with a, we have a we have a, an IT side that that has built the catalog uh, and maintains it. Um, so it is, it's it's an in house development. Do we have any more questions? And if not, we'll move on to our uh, last speaker, which is Pat. Thank you. So last in line, I'm trying to give you a little bit of a view from the trenches. And uh, I am represented the whole university here, not only the Faculty of Engineering, my technical faculty, and my role here is uh, as the chairman of our expert group on fair data and member of our uh, open science working group. Um, my path into this is not that I produce a lot of research data myself, but rather from the computer science and data science uh, perspective. So uh, what's the status at uh, Lund University. Um, we had reporting before from both uh, the Research Foundation and from SOHF uh, about the annual surveys. And uh, we had to, uh, we follow up and, and work uh, with, with these to, to uh, see our progress and, and our, make our priorities from, from that. Uh, if we start on, on top, uh, we have in the research strategy for Lund University, uh, current version uh, ranging 23 to 26, we have a clear statement on open science. It's the norm for credibility, utilization, and quality. And the brave words is that Lund University will work proactively nationally and in the European level to develop open science in a way that promotes research and society's utilization of research. So uh, the, the uh, policy is in place uh, and there is actually also some action behind, not only nice words. Uh, and I will try to give you a little bit about that. Uh, first, so how open is Lund University? Uh, looking into open access uh, from all registered publications last year. Uh, no, the year before, we the, the 23 analysis is not ready yet. Uh, we had 85%. Um, the numbers in the uh, proprietary databases is, is lower. Um, so it could be good to know when you compare uh, different numbers. So what what they they uh, come from. How large share of our data that is fair is we have no clue. Uh, first, because we have no clo clue about how much uh, data is generated at the university. I think that's an impossible task to to uh, to answer. Um, however, if we begin in the other end and and try to make the data uh, more visible we can we can show from that side which which is, is uh, available uh, and in for open science uh, regarding uh, data storage we have um, ongoing projects both for the on the technical side and to uh, set the storage into a context where uh, 
it can be made uh, available as fair data and, and link into uh, our um, registry for uh, research publications and also link link our data, open data and fair data to, to the same storage. Uh, when it comes to support function for open science, it's uh, there is a lot per faculty. The university is a very distributed organization. Some faculty have a very good and well-established support. Uh, others are, are less so. Um, the data access units, they uh, do a, a great job in, in their uh, respective uh, positions, but uh, I think we have a bit of a problem on of reaching out uh, very broadly. Uh, I'm coming back to that. We have excellent examples of open science as uh, research infrastructures that have worked with this uh, for a long time. We have the ICOS carbon portal. Uh, we have a population research platform, Lupop, um, on population data. We have uh, work on digital archaeology that, uh, to me, is, is an impressive example of uh, how and what you can do with uh, fair data. But the general awareness uh, is low. So it's very much the, still the pioneers who, who drive the development uh, if we look at the bot bottom-up perspective. So uh, how do we uh, go forward from here? How can we make Lund University open? And uh, we start by tearing down walls from 1578. This picture is from uh, Kungshuset, where uh, this one of the central university buildings, which is older than the university itself, where they have opened a new new door. Uh, sometimes it feels like that, uh, working with uh, open science, that you have to tear down old walls. Uh, but we have, as uh, mentioned already in the s and presentation, both top-down and bottom-up approaches. So the top down coming from the, the central leadership is uh, the open science strategy, of course, and not only the, the very top level, there is also an, an action plan connected to that to, to, to make this, the strategy into the, the practice. Uh, there is support organization. Uh, we uh, working on um, developing a, a cross a university support organization and linking together the already existing support. Um, it, it is uh, many cross-cutting concerns, so it's not enough to have one, uh, one of the silos of, of the university involved. We, we are working out to, to get the, the different pieces uh, integrated, uh, but that's that's something that uh, definitely needs both um, attention and, and uh, courage to, to actually revisit the organization. We have ongoing investment in, in data storage uh, and the, store, the technical side is one part, but uh, there is definitely a, a need to have procedures and support around it uh, when it comes to, to uh, identifiers and also to uh, support different uh, aspects of, of giving access to data both internally and externally in case it's not fully fully open. Uh, bottom up, maybe this is something which uh, is uh, partly unique for the university that, that we have started to, to really pick uh, or encourage uh, the, the bottom-up processes, uh, it's not enough to have a strategy. We have to pick up the, the power there is in the, in the champions, in, in those people and uh, centers and uh, infrastructures that, that have worked with these. They have learned a lot and they have seen the, both the pros and cons. And by uh, listening to them uh, and uh, letting their 
and knowledge and experience spread across the organization, we think uh, we will will gain momentum in in that. And that's specifically uh, related to some research infrastructures where they have uh, good experience and, and practice already. Uh, other than that, it's it's very much about information and awareness. So uh, getting the the general researcher understand what is open science, what it was, what what's in it for me, and uh, how can I work towards uh, open science. Uh, the organization we have at the universities to support this uh, development is uh, a a um, leadership organization under the, the University Research Board Working Group for Open Science, which in turn has uh, two uh, expert groups, one on fair data supporting uh, the, the work towards uh, enabling sharing post, uh, research data and uh, all the different aspects uh, of that. We have both technical and uh, legal, uh, we have uh, IT uh, competence. So it's it's a kind of a, a cross-functional function, uh, expert group. The champions group uh, are the experienced uh, and uh, uh, researchers, the burning for open science, and uh, we gather them to, to inspire and, and share experience. And we have the, the supports, uh, a very small open science office, but uh, very important to get this going. Uh, within the line organization, uh, the uh, university governance uh, has a project to develop uh, e infrastructure that, uh, as as a part of it, uh, has its task to to support uh, the open science strategies. And we have uh, in the university library a uh, lot of information uh, and support related to, to uh, open science and uh, especially fair data and, and open access. So uh, activities, uh, more concretely, what do we do? Uh, the uh, roadmap from SOHF is uh, a a guide for us. It works very much, very well as a, a path to to set out the path for, forward and to to help prioritize uh, what what we uh, spend our efforts on. Uh, we have uh, organized by the Champions Group uh, the first instance of LO Open Science Days in November last year, and intention is to continue with this as a a forum internally for uh, bringing up this, these uh, discussions, these topics for discussion. And we also uh, intend to have more of, of seminar series, et cetera, where, where people can, can meet and, and share uh, challenges and experiences. Uh, we hope to uh, spend more effort on spreading uh, knowledge internally uh, using different channels, uh, creating awareness, and uh, also uh, sharing knowledge about uh, the practices cream, uh, around uh, open and fair data. Uh, in uh, we want to increase the visibility of of data as an asset as a research outcome. Uh, by uh, allowing to, to register uh, data sets also together with our publications database. We want to foster more open access. We are not satisfied with 85%. Uh, we, we want to go, go further. Uh, parts of that could be actually cleaning up in the, in the registration and reporting. And uh, parts of it is, is uh, truly making the, the last few percentages of uh, the publications also open access. And finally, we collaborate uh, within uh, Sweden. It's very valuable to have the, the working group uh, coordinated by the uh, Research Council 
uh, and also the, the collaboration within SHF. And we are members of uh, EOSC Association from Lund University and, and try to navigate that, that landscape, even though we uh, currently focus on, on getting the basics, basic homework uh, done before we, we uh, try to go uh, take, take a bigger role in the, in the European uh, arena. So by that, thank you very much. Uh, short uh, peek into uh, how we are working at Lund University. Thank you very much for that, Per. Uh, we have one so far. Uh, which incentives for researchers does Lund University have to increase their research data? So uh, there is, is no extra funding. Uh, what what uh, th this is more of the, of the mechanism in itself to, uh, to 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 increase the awareness of of, of the the role of um, of sh sh sharing uh, recent data and and information about data. Um, from my own research, which is. Uh, about um, share data sharing between public and private organizations, we have seen clear indications that it's it's not only the data itself. Maybe not always that's the primary uh, incentive, but to get contact with people working with similar data and and share the experience is as important as. The data itself, uh, but uh, of course there there uh, will will be needed needed uh, more more uh, specific incentives for uh, at least for the laggers uh, to uh, catch catch the train here. Uh, but uh, for right right now there are nothing specifically um, no no a package of, of providing incentives. Uh, we have uh, another question. Uh, do you cooperate with other universities in your open science network? Uh, in, in the network, yes, uh, but not, uh, and within SND, we, we have the, the, the collaboration. Um, and all when it comes to the, the collaboration within uh, in the, in the national reference group, it's more of, of experience sharing than, than direct uh, collaboration. Uh, and another question. Uh, can you please detail how Lund University works to develop their membership in uh, EOSC A? Uh, does this work involve a dialogue with the researchers? Yes, yes, and no. <laughs> uh, there, there is so so um, at the moment. Uh, our our plans for twenty four is to actually uh, set up kind of a strategy for how how we should work with with EOSC Association. I mean, we can spend a full time person to to only to to interface with all the activities ongoing, and that's not our priority at the moment. Uh, so we we our strategy right now is to to more follow the development uh, and keep our eyes open for uh, where um, activities al align with what our our current needs. Uh, the need the involvement with with researchers uh, we intend to try to find all the people in our organization that already have interfaces with, with EOSC one way or, or the other. Um, that's, that's hard to, to achieve in, in a big organization like this. Um, but uh, it's, it's definitely that way we can, can get EOSC situation to be something that is support, uh, real support for the, for the researchers. So uh, the, the, the vision is there to uh, get this um, grassroots uh, connections, uh, but it's, um, and also through, then through these working groups, especially the champions group, we have representatives that also have uh, involvement with, with EOSC. 
Um, another question we've been given is, uh, I'm curious about the open science days. Uh, would you say a little more about them? I can. We also have in the audience here, uh, Carolina Lin from our open science uh, support office, uh, who was the coordinating uh, these uh, these days. Um, so uh, please add add if you are able, Carolina. So uh, it it was two uh, half days uh, with uh, themes across open science. We had a combination of uh, internal and external speakers, uh, and uh, it was kind of a, a meeting point to to discuss. Carolina, please fill, fill out. Yes, you wanted me to say something about the selection of the champions. Uh, so when we put together this structure with these organizations, that uh, these groups that Pa presented, uh, we wanted to get as much people as possible within this these groups or as much perspectives as possible, but not make groups that are too large. So therefore we created these experts groups. So these we have been, um, since this is pretty new. We, 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 we did our best and tried to identify people with experiences of diverse open science practices at the university. And then they were asked if they were interested in participating in this group and they were actually appointed by the by the Pro Vice Chancellor for Research and the Research Board to be part of this group. So, uh, so this is still very new. So we will see how this uh, how this community evolves in the uh, forthcoming years. They have been appointed for one year, and now we hope they will be appointed for another three years. So we will have a larger time frame to work with. Thank you, Carolina. Um, are there any more questions for Pear or any of the uh, previous speakers? Um, well, if there's no more questions, the, the chat will be saved um, uh, along with the, the recording. Um, and uh, as I said, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, uh, but uh, that's okay. Um, so I'd just like to thank all of you uh, once again uh, for uh, your presentations uh, and as well, thank you to the audience for participating and being here. Thank you very much.